Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I've entitled this one, Coming Back to God. I'm reading to you from the Christian Standard Bible. When all these things happen to you, the blessings and the curses I have set before you, and you come back to your senses while you, you are in all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and you and your children return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and all your soul by doing everything I am commanding you today. Then he will restore your fortunes, have compassion on you and gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. Even if your exiles are at the farthest horizon, he will gather you and bring you back from there. The Lord your God will bring you into the land your ancestors possessed, and you will take possession of it. He will cause you to prosper and multiply you more than he did your ancestors. The Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants, and you will love him with all your heart and with all your soul so that you will live. The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies who hate and persecute you. Then you'll again obey him and follow all his commands I am commanding you today. The Lord your God will make you prosper abundantly in all the work of your hands, your offspring, the offspring of your livestock and the produce of your land. Indeed, the Lord will again delight in your prosperity as he delighted in that of your ancestors. When you obeyed the Lord your God by keeping his commands and statutes that are written in this book of the law, and return to him with all your heart and all your soul. This command that I give you today is certainly not too difficult or beyond your reach. It is not in heaven so that you have to ask who will go up to heaven, get it for, get it for us, and proclaim it to us so that we may follow it. And it is not across the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea, get it for us, and proclaim it to us so that we may follow it. But the message is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart so that you may follow it. See, today I've set before you life and prosperity, death and adversity. For I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, statutes and ordinances, so that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God may bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not listen and you are led astray to bow in worship to other gods and serve them, I tell you today that you will certainly perish and will not prolong your days in the land you are entering to possess across the Jordan. I will call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Love the Lord your God, obey him and remain faithful to him for he is your life and he will prolong your days as you live in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, brothers and sisters, this passage is all about coming back to God. The possibilities are always there to come back to the Lord, our God. Now, repentance is more than a feeling. It is to love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind and strength and to obey everything he has written in his law. That is what Moses said to the Israelites. That is what real repentance is. It's a turning back, more than a feeling. Actions are also involved. Now, I thought there was a number of strange things that I just wanted to highlight for you. Firstly, Moses makes an assumption that the people of Israel will fall away. He basically says, and when you end up in a foreign place, uh, then you can return to the Lord. Now, this actually happened in the history of Israel. Uh, many hundreds of years after this particular event took place, the people of Israel were taken into exile the people of Israel, the northern kingdom at that time, were, were taken into exile by the Assyrian kingdom, the Assyrian Empire, and there they disappeared from history for the most part. The people of Judah were also taken into exile by the Babylonians, 
about 150 years after the, people, the northern kingdom of Israel went into exile. But many of them did return to the promised land. They had worshipped idols. God had punished them, but many of them returned to the land of Israel. So it's just amazing. The assumption is that the people of Israel and Judah would fall away. And I think for many of us today, even as Christian people, there's always a sense that we too will fall away. We will fail at times and need to repent and return to God. To think to yourself that you can live this life perfectly, that you can live the Christian life perfectly, is really to have too high an opinion of your own ability. The second thing that is strange or curious anyway, is that repentance didn't always lead back to prosperity or even to a, a better life. Now, this is so interesting. So the people of Judah returned from the exile when the Persians allowed them under Cyrus to return. And some of them went, not everyone, but some of them went. But they always found it a struggle in the land of Judah. They were a small nation. They had trouble with their crops. They had trouble with their herds. They certainly weren't a prosperous people. And so this particular passage talks about a repentance that leads back to God and then to an even greater prosperity. Now, at times that did occur when the people fell away, God restored them and blessed them. That did happen. But after the exile, it certainly wasn't like that. Before you know it, they were taken over by the Macedonian general, Alexander the Great, and after that by the Romans and so on. It wasn't, it didn't lead to a greater prosperity. And I found that curious. I tend to think that when the people of Israel went into exile, that they might have repented and returned to the Lord, but, that, but it wasn't always with their heart, soul, mind and strength. And in a sense, they were waiting for the Messiah to come, the Lord Jesus Christ, and through him and belonging to his kingdom to really be blessed. And of course, that blessing is not always in the material area, but it's in the spiritual area that we are one with God and we will be secure for all eternity. Like I said, it's strange as you read it. You think to yourself, how, when did these things happen? The final thing that this particular chapter brings to our attention is that God's word is accessible. You don't need someone to go here or there to get it for you. It is there. The things revealed, the covenant of the law, this book of Deuteronomy, God's will is available to us. The problem really for us is not its availability. It is available. I think most, probably for every Australian, there might be five Bibles available. There's a lot of Bibles out there. God's will is accessible. But sometimes our desire to read the will of God, to study the will of God, to read our Bibles continually isn't really there. But we can't say that God's will isn't available to us. So some things that we can uh, pray about, and there is a question I have here for you as well. Why did the Israelites choose death rather than life? Why did they often, why did they so often fail to love the Lord their God with their heart, soul, mind and strength? Let us pray. Lord, this particular passage today has a kind of, well, there's a lack of fulfillment about it in some ways. We find it curious, Lord, that the people of Israel couldn't or didn't seem to have the capacity to follow your will. And Moses just assumes that they will fail and that they will end up one day in exile and there they would repent and return to you. We find that strange to hear and yet that is exactly what happened. So often the people chose the curses rather than the blessings, the curses of disobedience rather than the blessings of obedience. 
And we pray, Lord, that in our own lives, it wouldn't be like that for us. We pray that we would love you with our heart, soul, mind and strength and have a real strong desire to live for you each and every day. Lord, we thank you that our prosperity as Christian people is not so much in the material things, but in belonging to you, that you, Lord, are our God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who paid the price so that we could be part of the family of God. And we know, Lord, that in our life, daily repentance is always needed. We thank you for your word that continues to encourage us, and we pray that we would love your word and be students of it. We also want to lift up today before you our deacons, those who are, are kind of like your hands and feet in the world, and that uh, you would bless them in their task, looking after the family of God and those even in our community who are in need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.